Ha ha! Okay, we are continuing once again the quest of the fabled lands. This isn't going to be a very long stream because I've got a um, <clears throat> meeting, a uh, work meeting uh, in a couple of hours. Um, and then I've got the Nielsen ratings. It's entirely possible I may come back to it again tonight, but I doubt it. I think this will just be a one off. Now, um, <clears throat> on the last session, I kind of completed a couple of quests. I'd gone to see the Sea Dragon. Uh, I'd sold a load of stonefish at the market. I'd bought a piece of silver and all of that that sort of stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm I'm sort of debating, do I go back or do I go north? Now, the thing is, at the minute, I've got tons of money on me, <clears throat> which I really feel I should deposit into a... Um, bank of some kind. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, if I'm going to buy a house, <clears throat> I think I'd rather buy it in Matlock than Yellowport. Um, at the minute, I've got 995 shards, so I'm just shy of a 1,000. So I definitely can afford to shed some of that weight. So uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to head to Matlock, so <clears throat> now let me see where we got to on the previous uh, stream. I'm trying to remember the last number I was was at. Um, I think Venifax was 65, so I could fast travel to there. Um, oh no, 65 was the. Um, was the stone arch no i don't want to use that because that's cheating um i probably should have checked the number shouldn't i hang on let me have a look at the stream uh <laughs> forgive me for a moment just to check to see where i where i was thought i knew but um turns out i did i do not so uh give me a moment this is going to be quite strange I've got to go and look at my own video okay so um, <clears throat> let's have a quick look. Uh, somebody will probably jump in the chat and say, you're here. Okay, so, um, oh, I haven't actually classified, classified that, that video yet, so I'll do that now. Um, uh, so, just going to have a quick look. I'm going to mute it um towards the end of the chat i got to looks like it was um my options for next game are yeah here we go so i think it's five six one um that i was at and my options yeah my options for the for the game were continue north head west Go back to Yellow Port, store monies in the Merchant's Guild or buy a house and do the same. But, um, so kind of that's what I want to do before I go on any more quests up north where there are big monsters and that kind of thing. Um, let's make this map a bit bigger if we can. Okay, cool. And um, But uh, I think... Um, yeah, I think what I want to do is I want to find a way to get to Marlock City, which is down the bottom there. I've also got that quest of the uh, Undersea City to go to, which I haven't done yet. So that's um, that's another thing I could indulge in if I want to. Not sure that I do want to at this time, but I could do at some point. Okay, so why is that, why is that moving? Okay, all right. So we're going to go 561, and then I'll work it out from there. Um, yeah, so actually our final destination on that last stream was 135, which is the, um, which is the fishing village on the shore of the Sea Dragon. So, uh, so I'm just going to put that in here. 135. Let's just block caps that lake off the sea dragon. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, 
So in view of the fact that we're carrying hefty monies around, we are going to travel south east into open countryside, I think. Oh, hang on. South, I guess we're uh, west along the road. No, my thinking is I need to go southwest, but there isn't an option for southwest. There's just an option for west. Uh, let's go west. Three, go west. Da, 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 da. Sorry, couldn't resist that. 387. So we're going to go west. 387. Okay. All right. Then we've got some options. So traveling 387. Traveling west. Put that, put that in. Go west, young man. Indeed, yes. Uh, good to see a couple of the regulars in the chat. We've got Desert Phoenix. We've got Daryl. Uh, we've got Keith. I know Keith is also um, on Anti-Derivative Jewels channel right now. They're doing uh, an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> Turn about Intruder, which is actually one of my favorite that's one of my favourite um, original original season, original series, Star Trek episodes. Okay. So, let's see what the options are, people. The options are, you're on the road between Karen Baru and Trifoil. Okay, that's good. Oh, yeah, that Karen Baru is up there. Cat Trifoils here. Um, you come to the weary pilgrim trav tavern, a way station between the cities. The tavern costs you one shard a day. Each day you spend here, you can recover stamina, the usual thing. If you want to spend three shards buying drinks all round so you can glean rumours, turn to 666, and then to leave, you can go south, north. West into the forest of Lurun. Don't forget, I've got a quest uh, there, but it's a bit risky with all this money. Uh, east to the lake. So, um, so 387 is actually the, the Weary Pilgrim Tavern. Uh, sea of Doom. Three, 387. 387 is the Weary... The weary pilgrim. I feel like a bit of a weary pilgrim. Tavern. Um, okay, let me think about what I'm going to do here. Uh, no, I want to. I'm going to pay three shards and spend some. Yeah, see what I can find out rumors wise. So we're going to take our shards down to. 992. I bet all the locals are going, uh, hang on, what's that rather large uh, sack of coins? Uh, that you, oh, nothing. Uh, they're just chocolate coins. Uh, nothing for you to uh, see here. Put that in there. Oh, sorry, I accidentally muted myself there. Right, so as I was saying, uh, <laughs> we have to turn to entry 666. Anyone know where to read these books online? Somebody said something about that in one of the gaming forums, that they were all available on Blah Blah, um, but I can't remember what Blah Blah was. So 666, let's have a look. You can buy them all, by the way, mate, on Amazon. They're all available, and they're not too pricey. A trader from the far north tells a story about a great wizard, Taragaz the Magnificent, who was tricked by a shaman of the Horde of a Thousand Winds on the Great Steps. He imprisoned Targaz inside a giant ruby and proceeded to loot Targaz's tower. Okay. Um... But in his stupidity, he opened the great wizard's 
Casket of Imponderables. I love that. Casket of Imponderables. And unleashed a terrible storm that swept across the steppes, scattering many of the tribes far and wide. Shaman was killed, of course, but as far as anyone knows, Targaz is still trapped in the ruby, waiting patiently for his release, perhaps for another hundred years. Who knows? One thing's for certain. It won't be me trying to get him out. Okay. And then I've got the same traveling options as before. Right. So, um, okay, well, that's an interesting thing. I'm just going to sort of, under my notes, I think I'll make a note of um, Wizard Traps in Ruby that probably shouldn't release, be released. Targaraz. Um, Wizard Traps in Ruby. He might give me a big reward, you never know, for releasing him. All right, so from here, I'm going to travel. Let's enlarge the map a bit. Um, from here, I'm basically going to travel south, back down to Trefoil, and then I'm going to go to Marlock City. I'm going to buy a house and so forth. Let's have a look. Um, so south takes me to 558, which I think we've probably been to before may in fact be the the city you join the much traveled road that connects trefoil and karam baru the traffic mainly consists of convoys and troops i haven't actually got to this bit before uh i can follow the road north i can go north into crustmore all oh, right yeah there we go towards the devil's peak there i can go east to the river which i've just come from <clears throat> um I can go back up north, which I've technically also just come from. I can go to Trefoil. So I want to go to Trefoil, and then from Trefoil, I want to travel to Marlock City. So um, we're going to 250, which I think will turn out to be Trefoil again, which we've already been to. The city with the funky ladders. Uh, it is. Um, the city of Trefoil is a ter Oh, no, 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 no. The city with the funky label ladders was not Trefoil, was it? Was it? It was um, it was Venifax. I haven't been to Trefoil before. Okay, right. So two fifty, two fifty is the city of Trefoil. Um, so uh, this is interesting. The city of Trefoil is a terrifying vision of apocalyptic destruction. It had once been a thriving crossroads town. Okay, it's not a city, it's a town. But it's now a burnt-out hulk. Okay. It was almost razed to the ground when it declared for the king and tried to hold out against the army of Grieve Marlock during the recent civil war. It was sacked by the general's mercenaries. General Marlock is now trying to rebuild it. Craftsmen are hard at work everywhere. If you have the code word amends and want to visit Olifard the Wizardly, <laughs> interesting, um, turn to 256. I don't think I do have that code word. Uh, I do not, no. So pure, uh, clearly something to do with the quest. Otherwise, there's nothing here but ashes and rubble to see. So um, the options are, and thank you to the uh, six people that were watching, uh, feel free to drop a comment in the chat or help me with my choices. The options are take the road to Shadar Tor. Um, Shadar Tor. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, down there. That's by the Sea Monsters, uh, which is where the quest is, one of the quests i got. Take the road to Marlock City, head into Crossmore, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm going to go to Marlock City, which is 377. Because I'm going to go there, I'm going to go to the city, and I'm going to buy a house in Marlock City, which is here. Um, <clears throat> that's the biggest city in this section of the world of the Fabled Lands, in the kingdom of Saraka. I think it's called Sakara, sorry. Um yeah, so 
377. Is that going to get us there straight away, or is there going to be a bit of... The road between Mark and Trefoil is well maintained with regular guard posts. The Sakarans are nothing if not efficient. Roll a die six. Okay, I will. I have rolled a two. Bad omen. Lose one blessing. I don't have any blessings. So ha <laughs> ha Screw you, buddy. Um, okay. When you are ready, you can continue to Trefoil, to Marlock, or north into Crossmore. So I'll go to Marlock City, which is 100. Okay. I think this might actually be the city this time. It is. Oh, it's very big. Marlock City is a huge, sprawling metropolis enclosed in a fortified wall said to have been built a thousand years ago by the ancient Shaddar Empire. It is the capital city of Saqqara. Marlock City was once known as Soka until General Grieve Marlock led the army in a bloody revolt against the old king, Corin VII, and had him executed. The general renamed the city after himself. No ego there. Uh, cool. It is now a crime to call it Soka. The general lives in the old king's palace and calls himself the protector general of all Sakara. Whereas the old king was corrupt, the general rules with a fist of iron. Some people like the new regime, others are loyalists, still loyal to Nergen, the heir to the throne, who has gone into hiding somewhere. Outside the city gates hang the bodies of many dead people. Labels around their necks read rebels, executed by the state for the good of the people. You best behave yourself if you don't want to end up like one of them. Great Sir Guardsman, nodding towards the swinging corpses. As you pass through the great eagle-headed gates of Marlock City, you can buy a townhouse in Marlock for 200 shards. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Owning a house to give you a place of rest and store equipment. If you buy one, cross 200 shards off and tick the box next to the townhouse option. And then I've got all kinds of options here. Um, I can... Visit Three Rings Tavern, visit various temples, four temples, go to the market, go to the harbour, explore the city, visit the House of Priests, visit the General's Palace, and then there's four options, five options of travel. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, get a townhouse and go to 434. And I don't actually need to, like, rest my stamina, but... Here we go. So you can leave possessions and money here, save having to carry them around with you. You can also rest safely and recover any stamina. Record in the box anything you wish to leave. Each time you return, roll two dice. Um, a score of two to ten and your possessions are sa saved. A thief, all your money you left here is gone. And uh, a double six means earthquake. Lose all the possessions you left here and the townhouse. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's interesting. All right. So um, I'm going to um, so I'm going to buy the townhouse. So I'm taking off two hundred shards, which means I've got seven hundred and ninety-two left. And uh, I'm going to add this in my notes that I own a townhouse um i haven't actually by the way guys i haven't actually got a character name yet for this character uh, i'd like suggestions of names in chat please something appropriately for a fantasy world um you know like loxy the Le lethal or reeking robin um but anyway whatever you come up with let me know um I wonder if, uh, um, yeah, right. So we shall see. Uh, I still don't have a name at the minute. I'm the man with no name. I guess I could call him that, but that's a bit, that's a bit shy. Right. So I'm just going to put in my notes here that I've owned, a, bought a house, something that I would really dearly love to do in real life. But unfortunately, I can't. Um, Right, so I own a town house, own a house, yeah, and I, you know, it's always seen a good neighbourhood. I own a house in Marlock City. 
Right, now the question is whether I want to leave money there or whether I want to leave it at the Merchants Guild. <laughs> right, well, I think I should split the difference. I'm going to... Um, and actually, the passage for that was... Is it 434? I didn't put it in the chat, did I? Let me do that. 434, yeah. So I'm going to make a note of that on my character sheet as well. So 434, um, Marlock Townhouse. And I'm going to st store some money in there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, store 200 in the house. So, house storage. I guess I can store as much as I want. Be quite keen to like hide the money in something in a very inventive way, like you know, under a turd in the latrine or something. But I guess that's <laughs> I guess that's not an option that they give you. So, um. All right. Okay. Prince looking for love. That's like a title of a Bumble profile, Keith. It's not a title for a character. Um, right. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the Merchants Guild. So, so we're going to go back to 100 again. As that's a major location, I should also cite that in the chat. City of... Marlock, and we've got all these choices. Um, I've already got oh, oops, I've already got two um, unresolved quests as it is, uh, but we might be able to pick up some more quests. More quests are good now. Keeping an eye on the time, I'm gonna play this for probably about two hours from now so it's about 10 past 8 uk time okay um so we want to go to the merchants guild so 571 okay All right, so here we go. It says, The Merchant's Guild of Marlock City is large, many-storied building of marble inside many clerks and scribes are at work. Here you can bank your money for safekeeping or invest it in guild enterprises in the hope of making a profit. A sign on the Guildmaster's door reads, Help Wanted. Okay, so potentially I could pick up another quest there with the help wanted, depending on what it is. <laughs> Sorry, just bad my nose. Right, okay, so let's have a look. Um, deposit or withdraw money is 605. Tallin. For a name, Tallin. Tallin the terrible. Tallin the terrific. Yeah, uh, keep, keep them coming. Right, so um, deposit or withdraw money, 605. Let's see how this works. I've not done this before. At least not in the world of the fabled lands. You can bank your money with the Merchant's Guild simply by writing the sum you wish to deposit in the box here. If you have banked any money with the Guild in another book in the fabled lands, add it to this box now and erase it from the other book. Withdraw money from your account. Simply transfer it from the box to your adventure sheet. The guild charges 10% on any withdrawals. So, for example, the guild will deduct five if you withdraw 50 shards. Round fractions in the guild's favour. Okay, so there's a 10% storage fee, effectively. But, at least this way, there's no chance of it getting stolen. So, um, 
what I'm going to do in in the um, in the guild merchants. I'm just going to write this on my character sheet: merchants guild of Marlock. And I've got an account here. Now I've got two hundred shards in storage at the house. That means I've currently got five hundred and ninety-two on me. Um, I'm going to store another two hundred shards here. I think is that too little? Three hundred. Three hundred. We'll store three hundred in the bank. I may, I may look at making some investments. I'm going to look into that as well. I think possibly not the most uh, exciting thing to listen to, but all right. Well, I'm afraid the investments have not grown as they should. We can't get married this year. Um, right. So when you are ready to leave, gives me a few options. Paying a ransom. okay yeah so this is a general banking guild and then it gives you all the options you can return back to so, so the guild have got a few locations which is quite handy so I can withdraw the money at more than one location which is good um, right So we'll go back to 571. Because I might want to do some other things with. Uh, yeah, so make an investment. Invest in, 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 in an independent film. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> um, right, so I'm going to go 104 here. Hang on. I've just ballsed up here. Let me just. I've ne I've got two hundred and ninety-two shards on me still. It's quite a lot. Quite a lot. Okay, done. Um. Okay, so we're going to make a we're going to make an investment. Well, we're going to look at making an investment. I'm not committing. I'm just going to ask about it. Don't try and cheat me. One hundred and four. Lose the cold words. Lose the code words. Almanac, brush, and Eldrick if you have them. I do not. You can invest money in multiples of a hundred shards. The guild will buy and sell commodities on your behalf using this money until you return to collect it. Don't forget that you can lose money as well, mutters a sullen merchant who leaves the guild penniless. Write the sum you are investing here. Ah, oh, I'm going to leave that for the moment. Okay, I mean, you know, it's interesting. Check on investments. Go to AG8. Um, deposit or withdraw money. Yeah, so turn to town centre. Right, let's visit the guild master, 290. See if we can pick up a quest. If you have the code word Cutlass, turn to 403. No, I do not. If you have the code word Amcha, do we? No. Okay, the Guildmaster is a tall, gaunt man who welcomes you. The guild in Golnar and Sakara is plagued by privateers on the high seas. Amcha One Eye is the worst of the lawless dogs. He has cost us thousands of shards. Bring me the head of Amcha One Eye, and I will reward you. He and his cutthroat crew operate from the unnumbered isles, now called the Kingdom of the Reaver. Because of the pirates who have made their base there, the isles lie to the south. A ghost will visit you when the clock chimes one. He didn't really say that last bit. 
Okay, so uh, if you want to take up the quest, note the code word AMCHA, and then when you're all right. So I'll write a little bit of information out about that. <clears throat> AMCHA. Quest for guild. Amateur one eye. So the head of amateur one eye. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So then we go back to the city. All right. So there's a quest there. Islands to the south, he said. Kingdom of the Reavers. Aren't they something from um, that sci-fi show, Firefly? Kingdom of the Re Kingdom of the Reavers. I don't think they're on this map. We have to look at the bigger one to see where this is. Okay, I'm going to show you the big map. It's pretty cool. Just so you guys can get a sense of the entire world here. Here we are. Zoom in a bit. Let's have a look. Operate from the unnumbered aisles. The unnumbered aisles. Oh, there they are. I see them. Yeah, sort of south out of Marlock City. I'd have to take a boat or buy a boat and a crew. Okay, well, I'm not going to embark on that quest yet, and I, I'm going to guess it's probably picked up in a different book. But it's interesting to see where it is. So you can see this, the, the size of the world is pretty big. You've got this section over here as well, the Great Turtle. I'm curious to... It's a turtle with a city built on it. I'm kind of curious to see what that is. This is the Anus of the Sea, um, Forest of Remorse. Oh, dear. That doesn't sound like a place to, to hang out. Norrell Country of the Hidden Ones, Chunda. Um, plateau of Dragons. What's the betting that I'm going to have to go to the Plateau of Dragons at some point? Um, anyway, it's quite a few uh, interesting locations. Okay, we're going back to 100 again. Um, <clears throat> I think at this case, point in time, We've either got to go exploring out or um, we could go to a temple to secure another quest. Visit the house of hype of, of priests, visit the general's palace. Um, and there's four temples, one of which is the Alvir and Valmir temple, which I think I've already got that quest for. Which is the, the Undersea Kingdom quest. Visit the Temple of Nagil, the Temple of Sig, um, the Temple of Elnir. I haven't like pledged to any singular temple yet. I guess I'm a pretty liberal guy. And then I've got four travel options out five travel options outside of the city. Um Gordreth. Gordreth, the the guy, the the gigantic. Yeah, I don't know. That sounds like someone who's got bad breath. Gordreth. Let me um, dash to the bathroom real fast.
Okay, so what is your quest? Okay, so I've got two quests at the minute. One of them is to go to uh, the forest of Larun, which is up here, um, and get get a thing off somebody and take it to someone else. And I've got to take it back to the Druid's Isle, which is a bit of a pain in the ass to get to. Um, but that will result in a leveling up. Um, the other quest is to go to this underwater city um, and retrieve this thing for the Temple of Alvir, and it's a golden fishing net or something. Uh, I could go and do that because that's relatively close uh, to where I am now. Um, so that does seem like the logical choice. Um, and as we're not going to be streaming too long today, maybe I should invest in that. So um, to do that quest, I need to go to Shadow, the Shadar Tour, which is down there. And this is uh, this is the smaller map for this particular book. So um, I think that's what we're going to do. With my money safely stowed in the uh, bank. Yeah, the fishing net. Yes, indeed. So uh, let's go and do that. <clears throat> so we are going to go southeast towards Shadow Tor. So um, 100 to 166 is to Shadow. I'm going to put this in travel towards Shadow Tor. We'll see what we can find out. How the hell I'm going to breathe underwater? I don't really know. So how I'm going to get to an underwater city, but um, let's go and find out. One six six. Do 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 do. do. You're on the road between Marlock City and the Shadar Tor. Along most of the length of the road, a thin sliver of shanty town has grown up. Tents and lean-tos line the way. You find out that the people living here are refugee, refugees from Trifoli, the city that was burnt to the ground during the recent civil war. Roll a d6. I don't want to roll a one or a two. I can already see that's bad. Let's see what we get. We have rolled a five. Because one or two is a pickpocket. You lose ten shards. Three, four, nothing happens. Five or six. You find a lantern by the side of the road. Okay, I'm going to keep that lantern. When you are finished, you can go to Marlock City or head to Shadow Tor. I'm going to shed, head to Shadow Tor, which is uh, 35. And I've just gained a lantern. Um, helpful. I already have a lantern, so I guess I've got two lanterns. But I can sell it when I get back to the, uh, the city. Okay, I've got too many windows open here. Let me close some things. Um... Okay. Funny enough, when I went and bought the lantern from the market, I didn't write it down, but I did deduct the money when I went and killed the Rat King in the sewers. So I'm just going to put, I've got two lanterns. So I've got 11 items at the minute, which means I can only carry one more. Um, otherwise, I'd have to sort of like chuck stuff away. Um, so we'll see what what happens breathing underwater lantern <laughs> maybe okay so we're we're going to 35 You come to the windswept cliff, an ancient pillar of jumbled rock, pitted and weather-beaten, stands on the cliff's edge like a broken, broken finger pointing at the sky. Seagulls sing their song of desolation in the air, probably taking a crap on it as well, I wouldn't imagine. Judging by the runes etched into the rock, the tour dates back to the time of Shadar, a race that ruled Harkuna so long ago. They are lost in myth and legend. Um, so I can do one of the following. Examine the runes. Go down to the beach, go back to Marlock, or take the road to Trifoli. Right, there's a picture of this thing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this quickly. Mm -hmm. 
And there it is. Looks like a, no, nah, you know, not much to look at, is it really? But uh, hey. All right. So we will examine the runes. 515. This is a location, so I'm going to gonna make a note of that. 35 is Shadar Tor. Oh, screw you. I'm, never know, this is Daryl. Shadar. Shadar. Tor. Okay. <clears throat> and we have, we're going to look at the runes, which is 515. Five one five. Okay. Put my dice back over there. Do 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 do. Okay. So, oh, I've got to make a magic roll. Difficulty eleven. My magic ability is only two, so I'm probably going to fail this roll. But we'll get the die rolling up because it feels like this one's going to be important. So I think I should do it on the screen, so to speak. Let's uh, let's get it up here. Do 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 do. do. Okay, here we go. D6. We're going to need two of those. Now, we're rolling these dice. I'm adding two, and I've got to get 11 or higher. So it's pretty difficult to succeed at it. 8, 10. I just fail. Okay. I wonder if the magic runes are going to kill me or something um right so failed magic roll turned to 314 so i'm not a magic guy really i've been quite lucky um on the last two magic rolls i succeeded i think there was one that i failed but i went to, went to the wrong bit the runes mean nothing to you go to the beach or head back okay so i'm not able to discern the runes at this time um so I'm going to go to the beach, 97. You climb down a narrow rock track to the beach. The sea pounds, the rocky shore, the spray lashes your face, a mournful yet utterly captivating singing suddenly fills your ears. You look out to sea and spot several mermaids and mermen cavorting in the surf come to us one of them calls in a lilting voice that fills you with a yearning desire to plunge into the sea and swim out to them screw that <laughs> i want to do that um make a sanctity roll difficulty level 10 my sanctity uh, rating is uh, i think it's better than my magic rating thankfully um it is. I'll tell you in a second. My sanctity rating is three. <laughs> right. Let's uh, see what happens here. Oh, my God. Am I about to drown? Turn to 159. Feel like I might be about to die here, guys. Your mind falls into a waking dream. You walk lazily into the waters. The mare folk laughing and singing take you down to their undersea home of living coral, where they stop you from drowning with their fairy magic. They keep you for several weeks until you are no longer an amusement to them. You wake up as if from a long sleep with only a shadowy memory of your ordeal to find yourself washed up in the harbour of Yellowport. You've lost all the possessions you are carrying with you except for your money. Okay, well, that could have been worse. <laughs> that could have been worse for sure. Oh, my God. 
I'm sure I had a good time. Right, so I have lost um, all of my possessions except for the money I was carrying. So I no longer have... Oh, God, I've lost that cool chain mail. That's so annoying. And actually, I could have put some of this stuff um, back home. Oh, this is some kind of bullshit. <laughs> Right, so I've now got to go to the market. I've got money, which is good. I guess that's no, of no use to them. So I'm going to go to the market and see what I can get in Yellowport. So we better go to the market, turn to 30. Bloody hell. This is frustrating, man, frustrating. I'm not going to go back there then until my sanctity is uh, higher. Because otherwise, I'm just going to lose everything again. Thank God I... Packed away some of that money, although, of course, that they wouldn't have taken that. So 30 to 10, or 10 to 30, rather. Yeah, stop laughing, Daryl. It's not funny. It's not a funny matter. <laughs> oh, dear. Can't believe I just lost all my shit. This is so annoying. I haven't even got a sword right now. So um, let's get the map back up here. So I'm now back in... Yellow port where I don't even have a house. They keep me for several weeks. Right. So. Okay, I've got a bit of money. The main thing I want to get <clears throat> is um, a sword. So I'll just get... Um, I'll get a, a standard sword with no combat bonus. That's going to cost me 50 shards. So number one possession will be the sword. And I can get chain mail plus three from here. Uh, which costs 200 and something shards. I can go to the Merchant's Guild and I can make a withdrawal if I need more money, incidentally. So, um, yeah, I am going to do that because I am going to need more money. So I'm going to go Merchant's Guild. I'm going to... Uh, I'll figure out what what I'm going to buy and then I'm, I'm going to make the necessary deduction from the Merchant's Guild. But um, that chain mail and that sword takes all the money I've got on me, um, <clears throat> plus another eight. Um, hmm. damn you can sell silver nuggets here for 200 shards so actually and I think you can buy them for a lot less up in um the place next to the lake of the sea dragon right i'm going to travel up there to um that sea dragon place before i do anything so before i spend any money so i'm going to fast travel this is why i write these locations down to 135 and it is possible to travel there without any difficulty just take the road um i'm gonna go to the market there which is 292 oh no the silver nuggets are even more expensive here okay all right no not doing that <laughs> bollocks to that well so i'll stick with my original plan and I will uh, yeah, I'll purchase the things from the market that I was gonna get. I'll take some money out to get whatever else I need. Um I, I think for the moment just the chain man and the sword is probably sufficient. And I should have some other money on me. So if I take out a hundred 
they take 10 percent, so that's nine ten so that's 90 for me i need an extra eight so that means i've got 82 left um lucky i did well at maths at school wasn't it and then um i've got 200 shards left in the bank taking out 100 okay <clears throat> so we are going to now we've got to decide where to go from yellow port i can fast track travel back to marlock again and go from there so i think i will i'll fast travel back to marlock um i won't go and check on my house because i don't I, i'm not wounded and i don't need to do an unnecessary roll to see if my money's been stolen the less i have to do that the better so um i won't do that a bit gamey but really every time you should go to the town town you'd go and look at your house wouldn't you really but um i'm still riding on the ecstasy of my mermaid experience um <clears throat> it could be my character name couldn't it mr mermaid city of marlock is 100 so i'm gonna fast travel there and then um we're gonna travel from there so we can follow the river grim north so that's not the same as the stinking river i'm guessing that must be this river here uh journey north into cursed um head west to the river grim delta okay that's probably going to take me to a different book i'm going to head north into crossmore that's 175 can you drop your junk off at your house? Yes, you can. That's um, these are terrible names, does it? Terrible. Um, can you? Yeah, you can. That's why I bought the house, and you can also recover your stamina there. But I haven't lost any stamina, so. Um, but normally, what I'll do is I'll go and sell stuff at the market. I should have actually sold some of the stuff that I had before, like the scorpion poison I had, and scorpion venom. I had. A, I had a healing potion. I uh, would have kept that though. So I, I've lost a lot of really good shit as a result of that. All, all the possessions I got from my quests. So I'm, I mean, I'm so glad I didn't lose the money as well. But damn, man, that was pretty mean. All of all because of a failed dice roll. So I've got 82 shards on me. Um, I've got 400 shards in storage between the two venues. I feel that's enough. Yeah, so we're going to travel north to, to the Crustmore. Uh, you can see it on the map there. 175. Let's do it. There is a tick in the box. Turn immediately to 673. If not, put a tick in the box. Okay, so I'm ticking 175. Because I'm not going to mark the books. Cross them all. All right. Okay. Never trust mermaids. Well, I didn't want to go out there. I only did because I failed my sanctity roll, man. So that's why. That's why I went out. Hey, but hey, I got to live with them. Probably had some fun, you know. Okay, you're trekking across the aptly named Cursed Moor. A great rolling expanse of blasted heath stretches before you. Grey clouds hang over a mournful, dirty, watered, coloured plain studded with rocky outcrops and low hills. A raven flutters to the ground nearby, eyeing you curiously. <coughs> Dusk falls, and in the dim twilight, a herd of horses Come streaking out of the night straight at you. Riders of Rowan, what news from the north? As they near, it seems to you that their hooves are not touching the ground, and from their manes, trails of wispy clouds of sparks like tiny stars. Fire mares, fire mares can get there in a day. Okay, my options are get out of their way, mount one of them. <laughs> Choices of words. Um... Well, I, 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 I feel like I, 
I feel like I don't want to mount the horse because I feel like this is dangerous. Um, mounting one of these fire horses that they've clearly stolen from the movie Krull. Um, so, you know, do I, do I want one? I think I'll, I think I'll avoid it. Yeah. So I'm not going to, I'll go 390. No, never trust a, a horse. Your gendron. No. Um, Okay, so we're going, we're going three ninety. We're getting out the horse's way. The horses rush past you. They seem to gallop through the air, whining and neighing, bellowing at the twilight sky. So they disappear from your sight. You make camp, and the next day you continue on your journey. Funny enough, there's no system for food in this. You have you, you always have to like eat meals and things in the Lone Wolf uh, books, but nothing like that here go north across country <clears throat> head east to the road head rest now so i'm just gonna keep going north across country so five six zero is the next entry okay You're crossing the rest western wilderness, an expanse of wild, sparsely populated countryside. A few trappers and woodsmen make a living from the natural resources of the area. A tall spire of rock, a towering anomaly of geology, rises up into the clouds, dominating the horizon. A local hunter, oh, so there is someone around, tells you it is known as Devil's Peak and that the summit is infested with demons. Okay, so this is the peak on the map here. Uh, zoom in a little bit there it is devil's peak you can climb the peak head north into the forest go south back again west of the river travel east to the road okay so um i'm quite curious to climb up the peak you know But my quest is in the forest of Larun. But but I tweak the news of terror. Um, I'm going to climb the peak. Six five eight. I'm a wayfarer after all, which means I'm an Aragorn type of person. Aragorn would climb the peak. If there are beasties there, we must root them out. You're standing at the bottom of Devil's Peak. It is a massive tower of black rock, like a stone tree trunk, bare and branchless, climbing up into the sky. You can't see the top because it's shrouded in grey clouds. Thunder and lightning play about the clouded summit. The sides of the peak are almost sheer, but there are many hand and footholds. It can be climbed, but only if you have climbing gear. Uh, if you have and you want to make an ascent, turn to 340. Otherwise, turn to 560. Okay. Well, I can't uh, do that. So I guess I'm going into the forest of Lurun then because I don't have climbing gear. So uh, we're going into the forest of Lurun 47. The forest of Lerun is a mighty swath of densely packed trees, a slice of primordial nature in the middle of busy, industrious Saqqara. Venture deep into the forest, north to the Bronze Hills, um, west of the River Gim, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's just see where the Bronze Hills are. They're there. So I guess I can go around the edge of it to the Bronze Hills is what they're saying. Now I'm going to have a go deep into the forest. Five, nine, six. Five, nine, six, and we'll just uh, forest of the run. 
main location. I probably should have done that for Anur Anurin. That's a um, that's an actor, isn't it? Anurin Bernard. Forest of Lerun, five nine six. Okay, well, big section of text. Let me just uh, dash for a second. Okay, the sky goes dark outside. Right. Let's see what 596 says. It says, You thread your way through the ranks of trees. In places, the forest canopy almost blocks out the sunlight completely, and you're wandering in deep shadow haunted by the cries of the creatures of the forest. If you have an oak staff, I did originally turn to 653 immediately. If not, read on. Oh, hang on. The oak staff was the reason I was going on this quest. Um, I'm going to say that I left my oak staff at the house and did, therefore did not lose it when I went on my reckless mermaid quest. So let's go to 2653. You're on a quest to take the oak staff to the willow druid who lives in a sacred grove somewhere in the forest. Yeah, that's the whole reason I'm coming here. Uh, you wander around looking for unusual tracks. Make a scouting roll, difficulty level 12. Okay, I've got scouting of six. I have rolled five, 11. I failed. God, I'm not having a lot of luck here, am I? Seven. Seven. Rufford. <laughs> I think get a fix is better than that. Um, oh my god. So there we go. Much to your embarrassment, you get lost in the vast forest. You wander around for days until you finally emerge at the Bronze Hills. Go to the 1110. God. I'm supposed to be... Uh... You're walking through the Bronze Hills. Virtually the whole area has been given over to mining. Everywhere quarries and mine shafts are bound. It's a horrible expanse of torn up earth. Hardly any areas of green are left. Great heaps of excavated rock, leached of their useful minerals, mar the landscape. You find a quarry that is open to the public. That is to say, if you pay 50 shards, you can dig for an hour in a silver mine. Um, okay, interesting. Now, I can also go back to um, the, the forest of Lerun from here. So I think I'm going to try that. So this is the Bronze Hills. 1110 is the Bronze Hills. All right. <clears throat> okay, and then we're going to pay 50 shards and mine. I could, I mean, I could mine for some silver. That that's, could be fun. But, ah, oh, I've hardly got any shards on me, so I better not 
So um, I'm going to go back to the forest, 47. I'm going to try and find this guy again. The forest of Lun is a mighty swath of densely packed trees. Yes, I know this. Deeper into the forest. I think I'm going to. I think I'm about to do a loop here of uh, numbers I've already done before. Yeah, I've got. I've gone back to five nine six again, which is the forest of Laren. Um. Okay. <laughs> there's a it's kind of a funny thing that happens if you're not looking for the wizard but i'm not gonna indulge in that so we're gonna go six five three again so we've gone back to five nine six and six then then to six five three where i guess we're about to make a second scouting roll and this time, we're going to bloody do it, okay? Yeah, make a scouting roll. Difficulty of 12. Right, so I'm adding six to the dice. Here we go. I have rolled seven plus six is 13. That means it was successful. Turn to 217, okay. Come across a forest glade, birds twitter in the twees, trees and woodland animals frolically play, play about. In the middle of the glade stands a mighty willow, ancient beyond reckoning. The trunk is hollow and a wooden door has been set in, in the entrance. You step into the glade, glade. make a sanctity roll at difficulty level nine. Mm. I have rolled a seven. My sanctity is three, I think. Let me just check the character sheet. Uh, it is, so I've rolled ten. So I have succeeded. Turn to three, five, six. Okay, three, five, six. Um, I do often do the die rolls on the screen, but um, at the minute I'm just trying to get through this bit quickly. If it's any combat stuff, I'll do it on the screen. Um, you are pious enough to be allowed to enter the sacred grove. Oh, thanks very much. You step in and knock on the door. A kindly druid opens the door and greets you. Hello. You hand him the oak staff which you definitely didn't take with you to the mermaid adventure and was definitely back at your house. Ah, the oak staff, eh? That's an interesting message to be sure. Is 50 shards and a willow staff. Can you take this one back to the oak druid in the city of trees on the Isle of Druids? I'm sure he'll reward you. Good day and thanks again. He shuts the door. What, no cup of tea? Turn to 47. Okay, so I've got a willow staff and 50 shards. So I've now got 132 shards on me. Might go and do some mining. Um, and I've got a willow staff. Okay. Yeah, I should have sold some of that shit before I... That's a fair trade, though. I'm gonna still going to say I lost all the other items, but I, actually I wouldn't have taken that staff with me while trying to do a different quest if I could have stored it at the house. So uh, I think that's fair to, to say that. Um, right, well, that was a bit abrupt. 47 we're going to now. The forest of Lerun is a mighty swath of density. Oh, no, no, no. We've already, yeah, we've already, well, we're back in the forest again. 
Um, I think we will go to the Bronze Hills, and I think we'll do a bit of mining. Let's see if we can get any money. So we're going to spend 50 shards. Um, we're going to spend the 50 shards that he just gave us, so that knocks me down to where I was before again. And we're going to go and do a bit of mining. So uh, to do some, so I've gone to one one ten again, and then we have to go to six six eight. I mean, I feel like there's not going to be a lot of gold to be discovered, but hey, what the hell? Let's have a let's have a bash. I'm sure there's going to be a die roll involved, and I'm sure I'm going to fail it miserably. Six six eight six six eight. You are led to a rock face in the mine. You start digging. Roll two dice and consult the following table. All right, I'm going to roll these dice on screen. Feels like this might. I'm not going to look at the table yet. So 2d6, as is pretty much every die roll in this game. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> right, so if I'd rolled two to four, I would have got nothing. Five to eight, no luck, and your hour is up. Nine to 12, you get a silver nugget. Um, when you're finished, and if you're still alive, you leave the Bronze Hills. Right, oh, God, damn. So, um, all right, well, I feel like I should get this staff back to... Um, this wizard geezer before something else goes wrong and I lose all my possessions again. So what we're going to do is we're going to fast travel to um, the city of Marlock, which I believe I can do without any difficulty. And Marlock City was, I think it's number 100, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And then when we get there, we're going to visit the harbour, which is 142. Right, so we've gone. I'm going to put FT here, 100. Um, <clears throat> and then... Nurgan the Turban. That could be my character name. Uh, right, so I'm going to I'm going to go to the harbour one four two, and see if I can charter ship to take me to the island of Druids. Because I know at that location I can fast travel back from the Stone Arch. Uh, right. Okay, let's hang on. Let's zoom out a bit. Yeah. Island of the Druids. Okay, Sorcerer's Isle. I don't see that on here. All shipping in and out of Matlock must come through the offices of the harbour. You can buy a one-way passage on a ship to any of the following destinations. Yellowport, Wishport, Sorcerer's Isle, or Copper Island. Um, I feel like these other locations are probably on the big map. Big map. Let's have a look at the big map here. Um, Copper Island, yeah, that's in the unnumbered isles. And Sorcerer's Island is in a completely different section, so that's going to be in a different book. But there's no ship to Druid's Isle, so I'm probably going to have to go to Yellowport and see if I can get a thing there. So I'm going to fast travel to Yellowport. 
along the road there because I'm pretty sure I can. Um, and then uh, we will see. We'll go to the harbour in Yellow Port and see if we can get a ship from there. So that is 555. Oh, I didn't write down the number of the harbour in the other place than mine. Um, okay, Island of the Druids, 15 shards, 301. Right, so I'm taking passage to Island, Island of the Druids, and I'm going to um, deduct the relevant cost. Um, so let me do that. Got to take 15 shards off. Um, <clears throat> so that's uh, 67. I own it. Okay, and but I've still got 400 in the hat. I've got 200 in the house and in Marlock and 200 in the Merchant's Guild, so doing all right there. That money went quick, though, man, because I had to buy all my weapons and shit again after I lost everything. But, you know, I did it properly, didn't, didn't cheat. Would have been easy to say bollocks to that. Right, okay, so <clears throat> um, a barge heading for the Isle of Druids to buy furs is preparing to is prepared to take you cross off 15 shards. The journey across the Sea of Whispers is uneventful. You dock at the training post on the island a week or so later, 195. Yeah, and then um, from here I need to go to that sort of forest entrance again. Uh, gain the code word Aspen if you do not already have it. Uh, I already have it. Um, I'm greeted again by the fat mayor. Um, I've got nothing to trade, so there's no point going to the market. Uh, so I go to the forest, which is some. Yeah, I've done all this before. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit tedious. But uh, still fun. Um, so let's uh, get rid of that. Okay, so. 195. Trading post. Isle of Druids. Okay, and then. We're going into the forest, which is 257. I've done this before when I first played the game because this is the island you land on um, at the beginning of this. So, 257. Yeah, it's, the trees are uh, tightly packed together, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> Got to do a scouting roll. Okay. Here's my dice. My scouting ability is pretty good. It's six at the moment. I rolled a nine, so I easily do that because it was difficulty level 10. I scored 15. So I got a 630. Um. And then I've got the code word. I come to a tree trunk that kind of says be gone human. Uh, and then I'm asked if I've got the code word apple, which I do. I do have the code word apple. Um, turn to 594. Oh, it's you again. Right. Off you go. The tree uproots itself and shuffles out of your way, leaving you free to visit the City of Trees once more. 
So that's five nine four. Okay. All right. So the city of trees is three five eight. So I'm going to type that in as a major destination. Three five eight city of trees. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to the city of trees, says a passing woman dressed in the garb of a druid. Um, yeah, this is a bit like Lothlorien for anyone who's trying to picture it. So there's a market where I can buy and sell stuff, all the usual things. Um, Shaman didn't find any silver nuggets because they're worth 150 bucks. There's nothing particularly um, that I want to buy here. I'm just looking at the looking at the list. Um, if you're a wayfarer by possession, uh, by, by profession, turn to six four five. Presumably, this is going to introduce me to the. If there is a tick in this box, turn to 248 immediately. Yes, there is, because I've already been here. Um, so we're going to 645 and then 248. Okay. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up fairly soon. I think actually I'll going to eat something before my meeting um so 248 if you have the willow staff turn to 319 immediately i do so 319 you give the willow staff to the oak druid of the city of trees ah oh, thank you a willow staff hey eh? i see as a reward, I will train you within the city of trees. Best hunters and trackers, you know. Gain one rank and roll one dice. Well, he doesn't say that. Um, the result is the number of stamina points you gain permanently. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. So I've gone to rank two, which is very useful. Um, that's So I'm now rank two in the game. I think there are 12 ranks in all. Gaining 1d6 stamina. Okay, that's an important die roll, so I'm going to do that on screen. So let me get the die rolling app back up again. <clears throat> Better not roll a 1. Okay. I think this might be a good place to wrap it up soon. Okay. So here we go. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Seriously, man. Ah, well, one extra stamina permanently is better than no extra stamina. But, man, that could have gone. I could have 15 stamina now. Screw you. So I've now got 10 as opposed to 9. That's my normal rating. Cursed it, didn't I? I shouldn't have said anything typical the lance luck strikes once more um when you are ready you can return to the trading post yeah 195 now from the trading post i can go to the the thing on the hill that allows you to teleport <clears throat> so i think i'll do that which is 65 and this allows me to fast travel to Marlock, which I'll do. Um, so I'm, I'm then going to do that. So I go, uh, then I go to 195 to 65 fast travel to 100 and at that point, I am going to go and check on my house. 
So we're going to roll some dice now. I'm not going to say what I don't want to roll, but I don't want to roll something. So two dice. Here we go. That's a cocked dice, that second one. So we're going to re-roll that because we can't. That could be a five or a six. It's a cocked dice, so we'll do a re-roll. Okay, here we go. Okay, five. So no one has stolen any money. There hasn't been an earthquake. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so I stay the night there, rest up a bit, and I take with me some more cash uh, from my house. I'm going to bring my traveling money up to 150, um, which means I'm taking down the money stored in my house by uh, 3383. So I've got 117 stored in the house. I'm then going to fast travel from there to the Bronze Hills. Um, because I think I'm going to go a bit further north. I'm going to fast travel from there to, uh, where's the Bronze Hills? Just looking, scrolling through the chat here. Um, uh, 1110. And then I think from the Bronze Hills, we're not going to go mining again. We are going to travel. I'm going to play this for about another 15 minutes. Um, so I can go northwest into the western wilderness. Let's get the map back up. Right, northwest into the west of wilderness, which is where the castle of the dragon knights are. I could go up to the citadel of Veliskarin. That kind of looks interesting. Then you've got that line of forts. I could also go to the town of Karen Barth, um, where no doubt I could pick up quests and things. Um, so that could be worth doing. What do we reckon, chat? Help me out here. Should I do go to Saran Baru, which is uh, this town just here? Should I go there? That's option one. Option two is west to the Grim River. So that's this way, edge of the map of this book. Uh, or option three, northwest into the western wilderness. There's not actually an option to go straight north at this time. So one of those three. What do people reckon? Mull that over for me while I dash to the bathroom, and then we'll make the decision upon my return. Okay, I'm back. I hope there's a decision in chat that's uh, been reached by the uh, people watching. Oh my God, no one's written anything. Are you all driving? Okay, it'd be nice to get a bit more interaction, but uh, fair enough. I will make the decision myself. Uh, 
I think we'll go to Karan Baru. So we're going to go 400. And um, I think that might be the town itself. Let's see. It is. So that's a major location. So I'm going to write that in. Karan Baru. Here we go. <clears throat> There's a little map of it as well. Karen Baru is a medium-sized town that acts as a way station between the citadel to the north and the rich towns to the south. It is a garrison town. Mainly, many supplies, arms, and soldiers move through Karen Baru on the north-south trail. Shops, traders, temples, and the like have sprung up here to serve the needs of the military. There is also a sizable mining community for the mines of Sakura lying the Bronze Hills. Just outside of town, there's a slave market where poor unfortunates are sold into slavery and brought to work in the mines. You can buy a townhouse in Saranbaru for 200 shards. Um, yeah, 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 I'm not going to buy one. If you have the code word barnacle, turn to 4 and 8. I do not have that code word. Um, well, I don't agree with slavery. I'm going to go to the slave market. That's one of the options here. Uh, there's all the usual things. You can go to the market, merchant guilds. Visit a couple of temples, three temples, uh, one of which, of course, is the Three Fortunes. Or not the Blue Griffin Tavern, and then you've got some travelling options. And from here, we can go northeast into the country, east of Fort Merith, which are those forts in the. Let's just move this over a bit so people can see. I'm talking. There we go. Um, southeast into the mountains the cold bleak mountains presumably or take the south road okay so uh well i'm going to go to the slave market first which is 473 free the slaves pretty controversial probably wouldn't get that in the book today 473 let's have a look Slave market is a large canvas covered square. The poor, unfortunate slaves are people from all over Harkuna, from the feathered lands, Golnir, criminals of Sakara, and nomads from the steppes, are paraded in chains on a dais. Merchants and nobles bid for the slaves they want. If there is a tick in the above box, turn immediately to 610. If not, put a tick now and read on. So I'm putting a tick in box 473. 473. What's it called again? This place, Baron Saru, or something Karen Baru. Strange name for a town. Okay, then it says. An unusual sail has come up, a little furry bat-winged humanoid. It is one of the making people from the Sky Mountain in the north, and it is going for 50 shards. If you want to buy it, turn to 459. If not, head back into town. Um, do you know what? I think I will. 459. Let's see if I can buy it. And then I'll go, free, you're free. 459. Is it 459? No. No, it's a lost. Let me double check this. Some three. Oh, I'm lost now. Just as well, I'm writing the numbers down, isn't it? Yeah, four, five, nine. Okay. Cross off fifty shards, and the mannequin creature is handed over to you on a leash. Its wings have been tied together to stop it flying away who are you then it pipes in a squeaky voice just then a palaquin carried by four bearers arrives a man leans out and hails you you there i've come to buy that flying monkey but i see i'm too late nevertheless i'll give you 75 shards for it uh don't sell me to that popping jay free me instead chitters the mannequin okay so do i free it or do i sell it mm, difficult choice can't i hang on to him i wanted to talk to him a bit more <clears throat> seems kind of annoying i was hoping to kind of have a chat with him okay i'm down to 100 shards 
I could take up to 175 and I could give him the monkey. Uh, I'm going to free it. I'm kind of like a guy with a gold heart here. So gone to, let's just get the numbers locked here, 459. I have a feeling this good deed will, <laughs> yeah, I say that, when's that ever worked in real life? 659. I have a feeling this good deed will come back to karma will come back to me on this one. I certainly hope so. You untie the little creature from its bonds. It gives a jubilant cry and soars upwards. Thank you, large one. It chatters. My name is Pillikik, the wing warrior. We never forget. One day I will pay my debt. And with that, he flies away into the clouds. 75 shards that you just let fly away. Comments the man, Palakin. Mannequin people can't be trusted, believe me. You leave the slave market. Acquire the code word altruist and then turn 400. Well, I've acquired a code word. Who knows if it's uh, if it's going to be useful. Okay. And I think we're going to... Probably going to wrap it up there. Um... So I reckon, yeah, we're going to wrap it up there. So I go back to 400, which is Saren Baru, and then from there I have to decide uh, where to travel next or go to temples. So next game, options are... Uh, one, further explore... Further explore the town, temples, etc. To travel north east to to the fort. Three travel north. I think that was an option for traveling north. Let me just check that. Uh, no, it's east into the country. Oh, no, 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 yes. Follow the road north to the citadel. North to the citadel. Um, north to the citadel. And then there's four, which is east into the country. And then I can go five. Travel to the, was it the Cold Bleak Mountains or something they were called? South to Cold Bleak Mountains. That sounds very unappealing, I have to say. Keith survived the third broadcast. Well done. You get a, you get a badge for that. Uh, I think I'll probably, my my instinct is to probably go to Fort Merith. That seems kind of interesting. And then I can take this road along the spine of Hagoon to the citadel of Velis Corin. But I might explore the town a little bit further. Uh, I don't know if I'll do another stream today because I've got the Nielsen ratings and my voice is already a bit tired. So probably not. Um, but... Uh, I usually try and do these around kind of like five o'clock my time, sort of early evening, in case I've got something else lined up. Uh, I'm trying to avoid going to bed as late as I have been. Uh, my body clock's reset itself, so I'm I'm going. I'm sort of knocking off around three a.m. now, which, believe me, is good for me. Um, so I'm going to try and keep that. All right, okay, that's it then. Part three of Fabled Lands. We're still very much. I thought I might travel books today, but um we're still in we're still very much in the in the territory of book one which is the map uh, for you now so guys i'm going to be on with the nelson ratings at um 10 o'clock oh by the way i've confirmed an absolutely excellent interview today i'm going to drop you a link in the chat now for an actor who's on imdb I'm interviewing on my channel Damon Herriman, the actor from Mr. In Between. He's also been in 
once upon a time in Hollywood. He's in the TV series Justified. You will recognise him. He's an absolutely phen phenomenal talent. Um, just one of those actors that I just love him in everything he's in. He's he's great. Um, he's like the American Donald Logue. Um, sorry, the Australian Donald Logue. Donald Logue is American. Or is he Canadian? I forget. Might be Canadian. So, um, yeah. Join me at 10 o'clock. That's in two and a half hours for the Nielsen ratings. Back on the channel then with Stepenso, Northern Bastard and Blue Collar Loser. We're going to be getting into the stuff we've seen this week. We'll be talking about Fallout at quite some considerable length. Um, thank you very much, Keith. Uh, until then, guys, uh, that interview with Damon Herriman, by the way, is on Friday, the 26th of April, 9 o'clock UK time, 4 o'clock East Coast. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to check that out. All right. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.